Hey travelers, got a bunch of these X11 amp breakout boards from a friend that are dead or intermittent or have problems. I'm in the middle of fixing them and I figured I'd make a video. Few things, I saw a few people having issues repairing their boards at home based on the videos that I've shown prior. We'll talk about that, we'll address that. And I also wanna talk about lessons learned, things I discovered from looking a bit more in depth at the circuit. Never really looked at before. So first we'll start off with this. So this is the more or less the turn on circuit on this board, as I call it, it's this area right here. It's the thing that more or less causes the board to tell the power supply to turn on. Um, you could do it pretty basic. They actually have a somewhat advanced supply here. I don't know why it's so crazy, but uh, I'll point to all the components and tell you what they are, what they do, and also what fails. So on these, they have a little microcontroller, and this guy over here is memory EEPROM. Um, so this is what saves and restores the state. So when you turn it on, this guy writes to this a different status. And when you turn it off, this guy writes a different status. So that means when you lose power, the microcontroller could go over here, read this chip and say, hey, was I on or was I off last time? And it goes back to that state. That all works fine. And if you're curious what that actually looks like, if you read out this EEPROM, this is all that's on it. It's all blank, basically all Fs. It only uses the first two sections here. And it writes 5555 five, five for off, 55 five, AA for on. That's it. I don't know what the 55 five is. It's just for fun, I guess. But yeah, it doesn't really use any of the actual storage of this thing. It just writes an AA or a 55, five, whether or not it's on or off. That's fine. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a 5 volt regulator. This is a NPN transistor. This is a PNY or PNP transistor. And then capacitor, capacitor, resistor, resistor. These aren't that important diodes. Not that important, they don't really do anything too important. Uh, basically just make sure all this works and, and whatnot. Now, the component that I see failed on the few here that don't turn on at all is always this, the PNP transistor. Uh, I don't know if it's because of over voltage, over current, bad design. Uh, maybe there's some transients that aren't suppressed properly because there isn't a lot going on on the circuit. Not really sure, didn't really look into it extensively. It's very hard. Uh, just to know from the failure why it failed, but I know they did fail, so that's something. And this is, uh, I believe this is only rated at 30 volts, which should be enough, probably. Sometimes you might get switching transients that are higher than that, um, but it's also only rated at 300 milliamps, I believe. So if you're curious, you want to give it a try, I linked in the description to a link to Amazon to these guys that are a little bit higher voltage and a little bit higher current rating. So, I mean, probably would work. Either way, if you replace it with the same thing, it should work. It's just a question of time before it fails, most likely, because it probably there's something wrong with the circuits, the way it's designed that's causing this to fail. But whatever, we'll move on from that. This is what underneath that circuit looks like, the bare PCB. So if you want to see where the traces go and stuff like that, there are a few vias over here that don't go anywhere too exciting. You can, estimate where they go. And underneath these displays here, there's a circuit that actually drives them. There's the current one and the voltage. They're both driven off this five volt regulator. Um, this is a little LED driver chip for both of them. This does the current sensing. Well, the current sensing is actually done by voltage drop generated across these resistors. And this reads the voltage drop, translates it into a voltage that this guy reads and displays. This is all just resistors, capacitive, passive stuff to make this work and set the limits and stuff like that. Pretty straightforward. But yeah, so if you wanted to actually fix it, you could change out that tiny little uh, SOT23 transistor. Uh, pretty hard to do though, honestly. It's not, eh, it's kind of small. So for the novice, I wouldn't really recommend it. I would still recommend doing this. This works fine. Um, it just bypasses the whole thing because these power supplies have a, uh, a standardized way that they're supposed to be signaled to turn on, and that's what these are doing. This is going through a lot more complexity than is necessary, and it honestly seems to be a poorly designed circuit. So I would just say screw it and bypass it and don't bother with what's on it, but if you really need these to work, if you need the um, the the slave, the sync ones to work, there are other ways you could do it, but then maybe you would work on consider doing that. I would probably just say, you know, put the switch on and call it a day. Works for me, but of course, up to you. Um, it'll take a little bit of time to prove out whether or not replacing this with a higher voltage, higher current model will uh, solve the problem entirely. So I haven't done that, but you know, you're free to do that. Um, beyond that, I mean, I could show you one of these repairs in process and I could show you that this thing is actually uh, dead 
and that is the component that does it. So if we look at this guy over here, I could probe this and show you this guy, you know, doesn't work, right? Normal classic failure. And this guy in the upper left corner, short that guy out, turns on, turns off, turns on. So on this board, that's a failure. On the few that I had that didn't turn on at all, that's the issue. Most of these, when they fail, the board is intermittent. So you let it sit, it'll turn on mysteriously and you start using it and it'll just randomly turn off and sometimes it'll stay off, sometimes it'll come back on. It's just, yeah, wacky. And most likely that's the cause, but it is very hard without cutting it open and doing some really fancy things with equipment that I don't have. It's hard to know if that's exactly the issue and what causes that to fail. But yeah, we could guesstimate that it's because of either an inadequate voltage or current rating, most likely. And I could show you the fix. These switches are the ones I like. I got them linked in the description. Pretty straightforward, typical switch. You got leads on them, ready to go. You yank off the uh, pre-strip sections, twist them together. You, of course, need a solder station. And if you don't have any solder experience, this is a pretty easy way to do it. It's pretty easy to start. But um, yeah, you do need a soldering station, ideally, to do this. Otherwise, it would be real questionable. And all you need to do is you solder the switch between if you're looking at these leads on the outside, you count left to right, you connect it between one and four. So one being here, four being here. Doesn't really matter what color wire goes where. Same thing, just shorting these together. Um, you can do this without a switch, but the switch would be preferred. And you connect this guy over to this lead here. And we'll plug it in. And you saw it wasn't working. And it doesn't change, of course, the operation of the internal circuit. So this still won't work. However, we flip the external switch. Ta-da! It works. So that's nice. And you know, obviously nothing will change there. When it's on, it's on. When it's off, it probably is off. The only issue with this design is you could turn it off. And it may not turn off if the internal circuit is switching or stuck on. Um, it isn't super common, but I've seen it happen. So not really a big deal. You can just unplug it, turn it off. It'll turn off. And then like if it does stick on for some reason, you can unplug it with it off. Obviously it will physically turn off. And then you could, if you have multiple of these, you plug them all in, they should stay off. And then you could flip the switches on them together to turn them on at the same time. If you have multiple on a rig, that works fine. I didn't have any issues with that. This other approach that I've shown before with the 22 kilo ohm resistor and then the switch or the jumper and the 22 kilo ohm, they both work, nothing changes. And if you look at the spec sheet for these, at least the models that have a spec sheet, it does say specifically that's how these are designed to be signaled to turn on. Um, it doesn't seem like a problem generally to turn it on this way, but from what I could tell, some models of power supply won't work when you do it like this. So this isn't the most reliable way to do it in the sense that some units won't work. But as far as I could tell, if your unit does work from this mod, it'll always work and it's not an issue. So it's very robust and simple, easy to do, um, but it may not always be the approach that works for everyone. So this is still the preferred approach, but a lot of people had issues with this. I think they were putting this resistor between here and here too which I, in my first video, I showed a resistor here and here, but the resistor that was here was very low uh, resistance. It was like an ohm or zero ohms or something. So it was basically a wire. And I said that in the video, but I think people didn't really understand what that meant. And they put the same resistor in both places. Yeah. <laughs> then of course, in my second video, I said the number's wrong. And I showed it right, but then I said it wrong. So yeah, really bad in a thousand over here. Uh, but this works. So this is really straightforward. If you want to do it like that, you can see it. It's working. Um, this still works too, of course, though, the same way I showed it before. Uh, it's a 22 kilo ohm resistor between pins four and five and the switch between one and seven. Um, I might consider going a little bit lower than 22 kilo ohms. The spec for these power supplies says 21 kilo ohms, but 21 kilo ohm standard axial lead resistors like that aren't really easy to find. So 22 is the closest. 
Um, from what I could tell, most of these power supplies will not turn on if this resistor goes above about 25 to 30 kilo ohms. So 22 might be a little close. So maybe I'd recommend a 15 or so because those are another very common size. They're easy to get. They're, they all basically cost like a few dollars or whatever. I'll link them in the description below. But if you guys have any problems with these, please let me know. I'd like to hear about it. If you get one of these to work, if you do the mod and it works, also please let me know that too. It's nice to see other people out there getting their power supplies back on the road, the breakup board's working. Um, and I'd like to get them some feedback. It'd be nice to know, you know, is it, is it working for you? Because I've done a bunch of these, never had a problem, but I've heard recently a few people saying they were having issues, which I don't know. It's hard for me to figure out what the issue is from this side of the camera. So either way, let me know. It'd be cool to hear. Take care.